Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. You know, Psalm chapter 7 is titled, A Shagayan of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, the Benjamite. Okay, so this is a long title, and I could talk 30 minutes about just the title. But let me just be brief. You know, the word Shagayan, that word is a Hebrew word that means a lyrical poem composed under strong mental emotion. It's a song of impassioned imagination accompanied with suitable music. It's a musical term. We use musical terms today. We use similar terminology. We might say that song is a rhythm and blues classic. Or we might say that song is a bluegrass ballad. So Psalm chapter 7 is a Hebrew shagayan. <laughs> the second part of the title deals with Cush, the Benjamite. And so you're probably thinking, who is Cush? That's a question that's debated among biblical scholars. Some say that Cush is a reference to King Saul. Remember, Saul's father, his name was Kish. Some say that Cush is a relative of King Saul. Others say that Cush is representative of those evildoers who surrounded and supported King Saul. Me personally, I, I believe that Cush is a term that's applied to those who wrongfully sided with Saul against David. And so I don't believe Cush is necessarily an individual. I think it's, it's a group of people who were in the wrong. They supported Saul and they were against David. Okay, so let, let's read the psalm together. I'm going to read in the Living Bible. Okay, the Living Bible. I have my giant print Living Bible. I'm going to read the first two verses. It says, O Lord, I am depending upon you to save me from my persecutors. Don't let them pounce upon me as a lion would and maul me and drag me away with no one to rescue me. And so, as you can see, this psalm, it starts out, it's, it's a, a cry of desperation from the lips of David. And I have no doubt that David, he had seen the aftermath of a lion attack. If you remember, David was a shepherd. He spent a lot of time in the field guarding the sheep, and I'm sure he had seen instances where sheep were mauled by lions and torn to shreds. And so David is alluding to that imagery. Let's read verses 3 through 5. It would be different, Lord, if I were doing evil things, if I were paying back evil for good or unjustly attacking those I dislike then it would be right for you to let my enemies destroy me, crush me to the ground, and trample my life in the dust. And so you can see that David, he is making his case to the Lord in these verses. He, when he refers to his hands being clean, when he's saying, I, I didn't do anything wrong, he's basically saying that my hands are clean as it relates to my interactions with these men, these people, these cush. I've been on the right side of things. I have not done anything evil against these people. And so when I think about this, because in the King James it says, if there be iniquity in my hands, how does this apply to you and I in our business dealings, in our interactions with people throughout the day? Do we have clean hands? Can you and I claim that we have a clear conscience as we live with and among those in our neighborhood and in our community? And so that's just a question we need to ponder. You know, we, it's real easy for us to uh, say that we've been wronged by others, but have we been on the right side of things? Okay, let's look at verses 6 through 8. David says, But Lord... Arise in anger against the anger of my enemies. Awake, demand justice for me, Lord. 
Gather all the peoples before you. Sit high above them, judging their sins. But justify me publicly. Establish my honor and truth before all of them. And so once again, David is, is making his case before the Lord. He's asking the Lord for just judgment. We know that God's judgment is fair. As impatient human beings, we want God to judge our enemies quickly, don't we? We want God to move quick on our behalf. But you see, the pace of God's judgment, it has nothing to do with fairness, okay? The pace of God's judgment has nothing to do with fairness. You see, there's an old saying that the wheels of justice, they turn slow, but they grind fine. Amen? Let's read verses 9 and 10. End all wickedness, O Lord, and bless all who truly worship God. For you, the righteous God, look deep within the hearts of men and examine all their motives and their thoughts. God is my shield. He will defend me. He saves those whose hearts and lives are true and right. So in these two verses, we understand that God looks upon the heart and upon the mind. Okay, God is looking at our motives. He's looking at our attitudes. He's looking at the will of men. If you remember in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, God said through the prophet Samuel that man looks on the outward appearance but God looks upon the heart. Men look on upon the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Amen. We must consistently do a self-evaluation on our own heart and our own minds. In Psalm 139, verse 23, David says to the Lord, Search me, O God. Search me and know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. You know, like David, we must do the same thing. We must ask the Holy Spirit to look at our hearts and to look at our minds and to reveal to us those areas of our life that need attention, those areas of our life that need adjustment. Amen? Let's look at verses 11 through 16. It says, God is a judge who is perfectly fair, and he is angry with the wicked every day. Unless they repent, he will sharpen his sword and slay them. He has bent and strung his bow and fitted it with deadly arrows made from shafts of fire. The wicked man conceives an evil plot. He labors with its dark details and he brings to birth his treachery and lies. Let him fall into his own trap. May the violence he plans for others boomerang upon himself. Let him die. And so I'm especially uh, intrigued with that verse that says, God is angry with the wicked every day. That's verse 11. God is wicked. <laughs> God is angry with the wicked every day. I can't imagine being the target of God's wrath and God's anger. I just can't imagine it. You know, how can the wicked prosper? When I look and I see evil people in my time prospering, I scratch my head. But you have to understand, this prosperity, this facade is all for show. It, it really does not allude to their eternal demise. You see, Satan is the leader of their rebellion, and he is rewarding their wickedness, if you will. But Satan himself has an appointment with judgment. A man, Satan will be judged along with all the wicked and evil people. As believers, we need to be patient. A man, we need to be patient and trust God. Let's go ahead and read the last verse. This is how David ends 
his Shigayan, okay? This is how he ends it. He says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to, his, to the name of the Lord Most High. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. You know, it's always a good idea to conclude our prayers and our, our singing the blues, if you will. It's always a good idea to conclude on a high note. And I can't think of a higher note than to lift our voices unto the Lord. To sing praises to the King of heaven and earth who is seated on the throne. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I just thank you this morning for for your word. I thank you for Psalm chapter 7, that when we, we look upon the scriptures, Lord, that we can identify with a lot of the things that David says. Lord, that oftentimes our heart is singing the blues. Lord, when we look at our situation and the circumstances around us, we are singing the blues. But Lord, we also understand that you are seated on a throne above, and that, God, that you see the wicked and you see the righteous and you reward each according to your perspective. Lord, we know that your judgment is just, just like David did. We understand that you are a righteous judge. And so, Lord, I pray for those who are watching and listening today. I pray that you would increase their patience, cause their trust in you to increase, so that when... They look at the circumstances and the situations that they find themselves in that they can rest assured in the arms of God so that they can know, Lord, that you're keeping track of everything and that you're angry with the wicked every day. Lord, may we have clean hands and a pure heart, Lord. Lord, may you not be angry with us, but God, may we be humble before you. Lord, may we walk a path of righteousness each and every day. Lord, we just give you the praise and we give you the glory today. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you, Lord. Amen. God bless you.